So now, the actual player one needs to go into those same spots. And it's the same as this one here. So down is going to be orange for this one. All right, so looking here, down is going to be orange for this one. Good old twist. Okay. So both this yellow one and this orange one, and I don't know if I can just twist them together. I'm kind of afraid to. What if it messes it up? So I'm just going to try and put them in at the same time. These are both going into down. Okay, looks like they're both in there. All right, so next one is red for up. So oh, both reds are going to be up here. Got to connect the ground wire though. Thankfully, there's already two spots for the ground, so that'll be easy. I'll just stick it in the other one for the ground here. So I don't have to share like I do with these other ones just for this test. We're going to have to take these ground wires out afterwards if everything's working because it's going to have to connect to the all the other ground wires and we'll do that step when we get to it. Since we got two ground spots on here, I should just be able to use the other one. There we go. So I've got two wires in up, two wires in down, two wires in left, and two wires in right. Okay, so now that this is up, we know this one works, right? Does this one, player one button controller work? Let's see, up, it went up, it goes down. All right, let's go into this and see if, uh, it's working. Okay. So he does a jump forwards and back, right? See that? But here it doesn't. See, it only jumps up because it doesn't have the diagonal. Uh, so the four-way joystick is working. So this will be great for Pac-Man, Dig Dug kind of games. Uh, but here you can see it's an eight-way, so it can go diagonal. I want to test this player two and four controls and make sure those are working. Uh, so I'm going to unplug the iPad here. Okay. And I need to connect the ground wires for players two and four in order for the iPad, uh, in order for them to work on the iPad. So I'm going to unplug the um, ground wires for the four way and the eight way player one joysticks. Uh, so I won't be able to use those because I'm going to use those two ground spots to test these two controls here. Okay. I also brought in a keyboard to use in case I need to do anything in the menu. We'll see if I need that. And unfortunately I cut this one too short. So I've got this excess wire had from lying around from another from when I did this project. So I'm going to make that my ground wire here. So I'm going to connect these two here at the end into one wire. I'm going to put the other end in the ground here. Okay. There we go. All right. So in theory, these should all work, assuming this little quick tie-in on the ground worked. Let's see if, what happens if I oh, let me plug it back in. Here. And I'll try and move these joysticks around and see if they do anything. Okay, so this joystick's working up, down, left, and right. But this number four 
one is doing nothing. Layer two. Move around fine, that one's working. And player four. Hmm, still not doing anything. Why is that? Unless it needs to be set up in the software. Alright, let's see. Uh, this is a handy thing here. Uh, Emulation Station has its own kind of key, keyboard mapping option. Uh, so if we go into options, you need a keyboard to do this though. So you go into options, so you go RetroPie Setup, select that, Configuration Tools, RetroArch, Configure keyboard for use with MetroArch. Alright, now we're going to go all the way down. It starts at player one. you got to hold it for a while because we're testing player four over here. Player two. Player three. So here's player four. Okay, so here's player four. That's the A button, B button, and here's down. Now, if this was like a Word document, you'd actually see a little cursor flashing here at the front telling you that you can type. It doesn't do that in Emulation Station, so you don't know. You can actually just start typing here. There's a little imaginary cursor there flashing right in front of this quotation mark. So you can just delete that out. It's not at the back, so it's not backspace, it's at the front. So you can imagine a little flashing cursor like on a Word document, and you can press the delete key and watch. See? It deletes the letter. And null means it's not assigned to anything. And in theory, the IPAC 4 here should be treated like a keyboard. So I'm going to move the joystick, the yellow one, and hopefully it will think it's a keyboard stroke. I'm going to hit down. Oh, it seems to think that it's a Y key on a keyboard, which means the problem wasn't here. The iPack is detecting this. It just wasn't programmed here in Emulation Station. Okay, so now I've got a Y in there. Let's go down. Uh, so that was down. Now I got to go. F and it's not in any logical order. So you just have to scroll until you find up, left, and right. Um, this is for a gun. L, L2, L3, that's your stands for left, like the left side of a controller, right? Um, so left one buttons are L1 is just L, which I think is shoulder. L2, I think, is trigger. And L3 is, um, I think, like pushing this kind of button. So those are your three left. And right, R is the shoulder, I think. R1 is trigger. And R2 are the right side buttons. It's, you put, it's the thumb push for the joystick. So you can kind of think of those as that. But I haven't connected those buttons. So I'm just looking for the directional ones. Um, X and Y is directional key. So there's left, right? Player four left. We're just going to hit delete, clear that out, and now I'm going to hit left on the joystick. Now what's interesting here is I probably don't even need to confirm if it's um, correct on the IPAC 4 since it's just assigning whatever value it is, so I probably don't even need to change the wiring on this one because I'm just assigning it here. So there's left, let me go find right. Those are our buttons for the right side of the controller. There's right right there. I'm gonna press delete, clear that out. And I'm gonna hit right. And it thinks that's a V, right? So it's gonna save that as player four right. 
And now I'm going to keep going down because I still think I need to do up. I don't think I did up. There's start and select when I get those buttons set up. Uh, so once I have all the buttons set up, I'm going to come back in here and just map everything um, and uh, make sure it's, it's working correctly. So player four up, and then I'm going to press up. And it thinks it's an end stroke, right? So it just thinks an IPAC4 is another keyboard attached to your key, uh, computer, right? So you can think about it like that. And I just want to exit. I'm going to press O. All right, so I'm back in the game. It did save player four controls, so I'm gonna move player four right now and see if he moves. There it is, up, down, right, left. So that little configuration option in player two, let's see if that moves. Up, down, left, and right. Yep, it's working. So um, that configuration tool worked. Uh, so. I don't even need to change the wiring for this uh, fourth controller, even though it's oriented differently because the configuration setting just let me assign it. All right, so we're gonna take two and four out of the ground here. We've tested those, those are working. And uh, we're actually gonna do the ground wires um, at the very end after all the buttons are done because everything's gonna go on a shared kind of ground and you'll see that. And you can see this in my other video with the big one on kind of how the ground wire works. Um, unplug this here, there we go. And uh, we're gonna cut this off um, because this ground wire is actually gonna connect to something else so I don't need this thing that I made here. I was just to test it right now. So we're just gonna cut this off here. Let me strip this ground wire. Oh, I can do that later when I do that. Uh, so now I just gotta extend these ones out. Right, so here's another one. They send like two of these with the joystick, so you end up having a bunch left over. Uh, so I just need to cut some of this off. Serves, and I don't need that much because it's pretty close. Um, let's go into player three up there. So I made it up there. go looks like it's orange red green yellow down up left right so orange it's going to be down down up left right good so this is going to be player three down down up left right see the last one at the end here Player three moves. Oh, he's not moving. So again, that's probably just a configuration thing because I have the ground plugged in, the wires plugged in. So I'm going to go to the configuration menu. Go back into the main menu. I'm going into options, uh, RetroPie setup. Okay. Go down to configuration tools, RetroArch. 
And go to configure keyboard for what because it thinks the iPad 4 is a keyboard. And we'll player 3 down. You're going to press delete. Figure that out. Like that. And I'm going to move down on the joystick. Hopefully it detects it if I plugged it in correctly on the iPad 4. I don't think I plugged the iPad 4 back in. And that's the problem. Nope. I didn't plug the iPad 4 back in. Ay, ay, ay. There we go. Should probably detect something now. Yep, there it is. So there's layer three down. So it looks like that's working. Alright, I'm back in NBA Jam. As you can see. The player 3 joystick is up, down, left, and right. So I finally got all four controllers working. That was kind of confusing, but it looks like they all work.